there is nothing abnormal about the other distributions for this one being called the normal distribution. In my previous video from the three-part series on probability distribution, we discussed about applications of discrete probability distribution in real-world scenarios. In this video, we will look at applications of continuous probability distribution using normal probability distribution. Welcome back to the third and final video in a three-part series on probability distribution. To those who are new here, I'm Shreesh and you're watching the channel Learning Puri, a channel for applied learning. Here on this channel, I give you tips and tutorials on various topics just like this one to help you grow faster in your professional and personal life. So if you haven't subscribed yet, do consider subscribing to the channel by hitting the subscribe button. To get notified about every video that I post and not miss out on the information I share, click on the notification bell icon. And yes, watch the video till the end to not miss the tips being shared. So let's get growing, shall we? The next and the most important probability distribution in the lineup is the continuous probability distribution. There are different types of continuous probability distributions. The better known amongst them are uniform probability distribution, the normal distribution, and the exponential distribution. In this tutorial, we will focus on the most popular and the most used normal distribution. There is nothing abnormal about the other distributions for this one being called the normal distribution. It is just that this distribution is found more commonly in most of the events in the world. To know more, let's go back to the problem of lifespan hours of various electric bulbs manufactured on a production line described in one of my previous videos. If you have seen my earlier video here on probability distribution, you will know what data I'm referring to. All right, so let's get back to the problem faced by Bling Lights, the manufacturer of electric bulbs. As a part of quality testing, the manufacturer has approached you to know the answer to three specific questions. In a batch of 10,000 bulbs manufactured, how many bulbs have a lifespan of 1100 hours or more? What is the percentage of bulbs expected to fuse before 1200 hours of service? What kind of an advertising claim can the manufacturer make? Following is the data for the distribution. And this is the graph for the continuous probability distribution. From a previous testing exercise, the manufacturer has found that the bulbs manufactured in the factory last on an average for about a thousand hours with a standard deviation of 100. The equation for generating this data has been shared in my previous video here. That video tutorial also explains how the data was generated using the equation. For those interested, the link to this video and all the other videos I will refer to in this tutorial is posted in the description below. You will also find the links to these individual videos in the info card posted above. All right, moving ahead to recap from that video, I had mentioned two important points for a continuous probability distribution that first, the probability of a specific value or single point of the variable is always zero. And secondly, due to the previous point, we always consider the probability between two points A and B of the random variable rather than a single point. This probability is denoted by the area under the curve between the two points. Additionally, the height of the curve determines the frequency of bulbs found for each lifespan reading converted to probability. So, it is quite common to get bulbs with lifespan hours centered around the mean. And it's relatively low probability to get bulbs with exceptionally low and incredibly high lifespan hours. With these three points being our guiding light, we will address the three questions that are being asked by the quality testing department. From the first problem statement, we need to know the number of bulbs with lifespan of 1100 hours or more. Graphically speaking, it means that if we have fixed one point at 1100 hours, then we need to find the sum of all probability under the curve from this point till the hypothetical end of the curve. In other words, the integral of the area under the curve from 1100 hours to the end of the curve. 
by just the looks of it you will notice that though the solution is not as hard as reading with your eyes closed taking an integral is still not as easy as drinking a glass of water hence to simplify this process great statisticians of the year introduced the concept of z transformation and the z table was born to use the z table we will first carry out the z transformation using the formula like so we already have the mu or the average value and the sigma or the standard deviation values substituting the values in the equation we get a z value of 1.00 we can look up the cumulative probability for z values using the z tables printed in the addendum of any statistics book or we could use the functionality of microsoft excel there is enough literature and video tutorials available to learn how to read z tables from a book however let me know in the comments below if you want me to create a tutorial on how to read a z table from the book i'll be happy to do so however for this video we will be using the ms excel to obtain the probability corresponding to our z values we will use the norms dist function in ms excel to obtain the probability under the curve associated with this calculated z value of 1.00 like so key point to remember is that this z value always indicates the probability under the curve towards the left hand side of the curve from the z value however to answer this specific question that is how many bulbs with lifespan equal to or more than 1100 hours we will need the probability under the curve from the z value point to the right hand side of the curve this value is easily obtained by subtracting the probability calculated earlier from 1 remember that the summation or the integral of the area under the curve is always 1 moreover this area represents all the bulbs with lifespan more than 1100 hours or more by simply multiplying this number with 10,000 bulbs which is the sample lot we are interested in we get the total number of bulbs that have a lifespan of 1100 hours or more easy peasy wasn't it if you found value till now hit the like button and share the video with your friends to help them grow as well do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on more videos just like this one all right moving ahead in our next problem statement we need to find the percentage of bulbs that will fuse before 1200 hours of service for this again we will follow the same procedure however now we will use 1200 as the x value instead of 1100 as in the previous case for calculating the z value using 1200 as the x value we get the z value equal to 2.00 using norms dist on this value we get the integral under the curve as 0.9773 or 97.3 percent these are the percentage of bulbs that are expected to fuse before completing 1200 hours of service now that's a huge number fortunately for us this is only a case from a real life example in reality these lifespan numbers will be far higher lastly the manufacturer wants to know what he can confidently claim for the quality of electric bulbs manufactured in his factory this is our third and final question to be answered the manufacturer states that he wants to claim some lifespan value with 99 percent confidence for the bulbs manufactured to work this means that we will need to calculate the lifespan value of the bulbs for which 99 percent of the bulbs manufactured will give service in other words looking at the graph we will need to calculate the lifespan value for the bulbs below which one percent of the bulbs will lie this means we will be back calculating the lifespan hours from the percentage claim that is one percent for this we will now use the norms inverse function in ms excel post using the norms inv what we obtain is the z value using the z value in the z transformation equation gives us the value of x as 767 hours which is approximately equal to 770 hours wow we did a great job of resolving all the issues raised by bling lights if you do think so then hold on to your horses let's look at the last question once again though we have capped the lifespan hours boundary at the lower end we have not done so at the upper end 
It effectively means that some of the 99% of the bulbs could statistically have an infinite lifespan. Now that's ridiculous, isn't it? This will definitely cause warranty and legal issues for the manufacturer. And we don't want that to happen to our client. So let's get back to the figures we have in our hand. We have an average lifespan of 1000 hours and standard deviation of 100 hours. Here, let me introduce two more important properties of the normal distribution. A normally distributed data is symmetric around the central value, the average or the mean of the data. It means that 50% of the values are less than the mean and remaining 50% of the values are greater than the mean. The next property is that 68.27% of the values lie between one standard deviation from the mean that is for our data plus minus 100 from 1000 hours. 95.45% of the values lie between two standard deviation from the mean that is for our data plus minus 200 from 1000 hours. And 99.73% of the values lie between three standard deviation from the mean that is for our data plus minus 300 from 1000. The lifespan hour values identify the left and right hand side boundaries for the area under the curve. These values are also called as the confidence interval for the respective probabilities that is 68.27%, 95.45% and so on. The area enclosed within the boundaries represents the probability or in other words confidence of the lifespan hours lying within the respective boundaries. For example, we can also say that we are 95.45% sure that the lifespan hours for the electric bulbs will lie between 800 to 1200 hours. If this concept is understood, then here's a quick tip. Did you know that you can use the concept of standard deviation and confidence interval to track your actual monthly household expenses with that of your planned monthly expenses? This way you can keep a tight leash on any wasteful household expenditure. All right, to get back on track, we see that the three standard deviation probability value from the mean is a little over 99%. So if we were fastidious about accuracy to calculate the lifespan hour boundaries for a claim of 99%, we can use the same concept of symmetry of distribution, norms inverse and Z transformation. The calculation yields us the interval of 742 to 1258 hours. Rounding the above figures, for the sake of convenience, the manufacturer can safely claim that 99 out of 100 bulbs manufactured will have a lifespan between 750 to 1250 hours. So if on an average a bulb is utilized for 5 hours per day, the manufacturer could provide a warranty period of 1250 divided by 5 which is 250 days or around 250 divided by 30 which is approximately 8 months. Any bulb failing during this period will get replaced with no questions being asked. Congratulations! You have just answered a warranty claim question for the manufacturer which he can now not only advertise but also use for improving quality and operational purpose. Note that these time periods were taken for the sake of an illustration and no electric bulb manufacturer will ever have a warranty period running into a mere few months. So let's not get too jumpy about the numbers. So as promised, here's another tip. Do you know that the same understanding of symmetric distribution and standard deviation lays the foundation for Six Sigma? Now you know. If you have found value till now, quickly subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Like this video and share it with your friends and acquaintances and help them grow in their professional or academic life as well. With that being said, probability distribution is a fundamental concept used not only on a theoretical level but also at a practical level in statistics. As seen earlier, some practical uses for probability distribution include First, calculation of confidence intervals to determine critical regions which can be used as seen earlier or in hypothesis test. In data science, it is useful to determine a distributional model for the data to yield valid conclusions. Random number generation from a specific probability distribution can also be undertaken in simulation studies. The concept of probability distribution dwells heavily on standard deviation. 
I would suggest you do watch the videos up on the screen to get a better hold on standard deviation. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Stay healthy and stay peaceful.